Welcome, Welcome to Corporate Warrior, the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health, optimize performance, and maximize productivity with your host, Lawrence Neal. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly. And I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior and How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter Corporate Warrior and How Did You Hear About Us field. Hey, it's Lawrence and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior, the podcast that shows you how to get the most out of your high intensity training and start and grow your strength training business. My former guests include the who's who in high intensity training. People like Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay and Jim Flanagan, paleo pioneers, Mark Sisson and Rob Wolf, successful strength training entrepreneurs like Luke Carlson, Adam Zickerman and Roger Schwab, productivity experts, sports scientists, carnivores, high intensity training bodybuilders and everything in between. Quick announcement, Corporate Warrior and Hit Uni are offering you a saving of 15% off high-intensity training courses and 60 days free access to the Corporate Warrior membership, where I help you grow your strength training business. If you're interested in improving your personal training skill set, upgrading your team, starting or improving your strength training business, this is a great opportunity for you. This offer is only available till the end of July, so head on over to hituni.com forward slash CW and check it out now. Please note that the 60-day free access to the Corporate membership is only valid if you purchase a master, personal trainer, or CPD high-intensity training course. It is not available with the DIY high-intensity training course. So once more, head on over to hituni.com forward slash CW and check it out now. My guest today is Mike Palano. Mike is the ARX Fit Product and Fulfillment Manager based in Austin, Texas. And he wanted me to tell you that he exercises an average time of seven hours and eight minutes per year on ARX. And he looks pretty good to be fair to him. In this episode, Mike and I do a deep dive into the evolution of the gym and the role ARX is playing in all of that. We discuss the evolution of health clubs, big box gym model is dying and the boutique model and how it's taking its place. The strategies for startups who want to open with ARX technology and tech like infrared saunas, vibration therapy, red light therapy, etc., etc., in an affordable way. Why Mike believes ARX is the most effective tool available for building muscle and much, much more. This is a really in-depth and wide-ranging conversation about ARX uh, and the business side of things and strength training in general. And I think you're going to really, really enjoy this. This is particularly useful if you really want to understand more about ARX versus more traditional machines and equipment, and also if you're evaluating ARX as a solution for your business or startup. So sit back, enjoy this podcast with the one and only Mike Palano. Mike, welcome back to Corporate Warrior. Ah, good to be here, Lawrence. Good to be here. <laughs> Very high energy. I like it. Um, 
So this is a really awesome opportunity for me and I suppose the listeners as well, um, just to talk to you know, someone who's, well, you're the, you're the product specialist. That's correct, isn't it? Within ARX, that's your, that's your role currently? Uh, yeah, currently had a lot of roles, do a lot of things on the side. Uh, but every day, my goal is to make the best product and ship the best product for ARX. Yes. That's awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real, it's, it's a sort of treat for me to be able to get you on the podcast again and uh, talk a lot about ARX, a lot about the mission and the type of technology. Do you want to, I guess, a really good way to kind of set the scene, especially for those that aren't familiar with the ARX products um, and the, the kind of uh, the mission of the company. Do you want to just talk about that just to kind of set the scene so people know what we're talking about and then we can dive into more questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll keep it real simple. Um, I'll just throw out right away. Like if you're if you're struggling to understand what's going on with ARX and what it looks like, and uh, we have some really good videos online. So just go to our website or go to your, our YouTube channel, and you can really get into see exactly like what is this product? What does it look like to do a workout on it? Um, especially if you're comparing it to weights, there really is no uh, comparison in terms of the total experience that we provide. Uh, but we've definitely uh, learn from the past, if you will. So, uh, the inventor of ARX and, uh, our CEO and co-founder Mark Alexander, um, they, they joined forces eight, 10 years ago, uh, with this concept of, of just how do we create a better version of these machines? And ultimately what that led to was, uh, let's just not use weights. And so ARX is a weightless setup. There's, uh, a motor that replaces those weights. And that motor is really, really the star of the show um, because it allows to create what we call adaptive resistance. So adaptive being uh, it can match your uh, the user's force output 100% of the time where a uh, weight is static. And so it's 100 pounds up, 100 pounds down. Um, our machine is constantly uh, matching your force throughout the entire range of motion. And then we have a computer uh, controlled uh, software setup that will actually show your force output live in the moment that you're creating. Uh, and then there's just a whole bunch of stuff you can do uh, in terms of comparing your force from previous time, as well as all that software can control the motor. Uh, so your range of motion is completely safe and it's the exact same every time. Um, we can control the speeds in both directions. We control pause time. So it's really taking a lot of the, uh, the issues that we knew we always had over the last 30, 40 years of, um, you know, the Nautilus days, the MedX days and saying, how do we, how do we either get rid of these or improve upon them? And that's really what the culmination of ARX is today is we're, we're just innovating on all the stuff we learned from the past and creating a product that allows us to, to kind of create a whole new generation of what we think is possible from exercise. No, that's awesome. And um, yeah, I, I think you made a great point there to definitely direct the, and defer the listeners to the video because you guys got some excellent videos which really demonstrate uh, this technology uh, and the Alpha and the Omni, uh, which are the two main machines, um, are obviously demonstrated in the, those videos as well. So I will definitely have those in the show notes for everyone. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about how you like kind of looking at the bigger picture in terms of how the gym environment is evolving? I know we had some discourse over email uh, and I think it'd be really good to kind of elaborate on um, the evolution of the gym and the role that you see ARX playing in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if we could go back maybe not even three years uh, from today, uh, what we were building at that time um, is the, the beginning stages of what you see now with ARX. But as we were doing that, we were getting involved in, in certain industries, certain groups, uh, in particular, like the, the Bulletproof world. Um, that's Dave Asprey and, and his kind of following over there. And what we noticed was uh, we would go to their show every year. We'd do it uh, in Pasadena, California. And we would be in this, and actually it probably even started at the Paleo FX show before that uh, was our first show that we did where we put it out in the public and we just had people show up and try it. Uh, but the, the forum of people that were in that, that, uh, that convention center uh, all had really cool ideas and they all had really forward thinking products for health, fitness, wellness, whatever term you want to use. And it was just the first time that we had ever really been involved in, in those circles uh, where we could actually communicate with those people and say, it's like, what are you up to? Hey, what if we added this to our uh, setup? 
you know, with ARX or what if we added this pre or post ARX, you know, so our team has always been thinking about a much bigger vision of kind of democratizing exercise, but then also really changing the landscape of, of the big box gym and showing up with, you know, 80 treadmills when you walk in and, uh, you know, a couple dumbbell racks and stuff. And it's just a very, I, I mean, it's, that stuff can work, but it's not very progressive. And we have amazing technology at our fingertips now. And there's a lot of people working in different uh, areas of technology. And if we can aggregate a lot of those to support the exercise that we're trying to democratize in this world, then that's a win for everybody. So we were, we were showing up at these, you know, paleo effects and everyone's like, what's paleo about, you know, motors on machines and that you plug into the wall. That's hardly, ca- that's hardly caveman. Uh, but what paleo effects eventually became, and we just had it a couple of weeks ago here in Austin, Texas, uh, is there's so many other technologies now because it's not just about the paleo diet. It's not just about the bulletproof diet or, you know, hacking one particular aspect of life. Uh, it's really about the full person optimization, right? So we live in a world that's very, very, uh, it's ever increasingly difficult to live within, uh, whether that be, you know, Wi-Fi signals, EMFs, uh, bad lighting, uh, pollution, stress, whatever uh, it is. So when we look at the the relationship of, you know, I love when people are like, what's paleo about this? Uh, well, this is no longer a caveman world. And we need different technologies that can that can support the stresses of this new world. And that's where ARX was like, oh, this is great. It's a very time strap world. Uh, we need to get as much out of our exercise in the least amount of time. That's typically where a lot of people are, are at these days. Um, but then we're like, oh my God, well, what about the people that are over there who are doing uh, like the VASPR training system? It's a growth hormone stimulus uh, machine and you can go to their website and check out their stuff or what if uh you know you have a muscle that's turned off so you're doing a leg press but your i don't know your hamstring isn't firing or your glutes not firing but what if we go use this other technology that these they happen to be in austin too called new fit and this will turn on that muscle for us so that we can be a better exerciser we can do the workout at the at the intensity that we want make sure the muscles are firing that we want and that there's no issues uh through the chain those are all the ideas that we started putting together. And then when we started launching ARX, we noticed that uh, not even really, we weren't even really pushing it at first. We were just, you know, selling our machines. And we would notice that the majority of our customers didn't just have ARX in their facility. Uh, you would think it would just be about a strength training facility and that's it. But what they realized, and now what the internet is allowed and the access to all this information is allowed is that there's a larger picture that we need to be looking at. And there's a lot of variables at play to make sure that your exercise is optimized as well as your recovery is optimized. And those people started adding all these pieces that we were seeing at paleo effects or bulletproof or uh, what other, um, wherever else we were, or we were looking at online and you just, there were, there were two or three technologies in one place now. That we're all helping the client get the best possible form of exercise, best possible experience that they could have. And that became a very, very strong trend that today, I don't know a single customer that we've delivered to who does not have at least one, but most likely two or three other pieces of technology um, in their facility. Very small footprint, but just high output in terms of what you can get in a very short period of time with them. It's it's really this trend that's just popped up. And what happens is they always end up, I always say ARX is a gateway drug. It's, uh, you, you come to a facility and they say, hey, we have this exercise uh, technology. Everybody knows they need to exercise. And so whether or not you understand what ARX is, the potency of it, no big deal. Just hop on, do a leg press, feel great. Uh, clearly, you know, something happened and then you stay for all these recovery modalities that they put in there, whether that be infrared sauna, cryo, uh, you know, new fit, direct current stimulation, fast for training, whatever it is, uh, they, they come for the exercise and they stay for the recovery. It really is this new trend and it's this full circle idea. Uh, and we just happen to be uh, one of the foundations for most of the businesses today that are starting facilities that look like that. 
Yeah, I mean, I would say out of everything, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like an expert on all those other different products you mentioned and companies, but I would certainly think that ARX would be the fundamental piece. You know, strength is is almost everything. Um, the the what, one I guess thing that um, comes to mind is, uh, and, and this is interesting because I, I know a number of um, entrepreneurs that are. Um, building businesses around say RX and then um, incorporating these other elements into it too. Uh, and I can understand how they, they all complement one another. However, in some cases, some of these fat fancy things can be very, very expensive. Uh, and there's a real kind of, there, it would seem there's a real barrier to entry for um, someone trying to build a business in this place. Um, you know, how would you... How do you think about that, and how do you, you know, do you get that objection very much by, I guess, potential partners or customers uh, in that they they're just really struggling to actually justify the investment in a lot of this stuff. I mean, ARX is 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 obviously a very effective um, product, uh, but it is it is not the cheapest on the market, and sure. um, and a lot of these other things are even, from what I understand, you know, a lot more expensive uh, in some cases. So how do we how do i mean it would seem that the only way companies can really get started is if they have a ton of backing it's quite you know it's quite difficult for people to get started with all this stuff yeah and if you're looking at trying to to jump out of the gates and have you know a 2000 square foot facility that has you know four air x machines and <laughs> a bunch of other uh, equipment in there that's that may not be your model if you don't have the capital for it so what we love is that what I just described, the people, those, the trend of people that are out there and they're starting facilities with our, our equipment as their foundation, they typically start with just a couple of ARX, maybe like a vibration therapy plate, maybe like an infrared sauna, but not, not much more than that. They start there. And some people just literally start with one ARX in a room. You know, you could a, a 15 by 15 room. You could put one or two ARX machines in there and you have an entire business right there. So that's not a lot of upfront capital. Uh, we do a lease model. So that lowers the upfront capital for people. It allows them to get started in business. And because the technology is built the way it is, uh, you can do full body exercise on it. All the compound movements can be performed on it. You only need one or two machines. So your footprint, uh, we talked about this with Abe at Everstrong in San Francisco, I mean, he's got a 500 square foot facility. If he had to purchase more machines to be successful, he would have to purchase more square footage. And in San Francisco, that would cost him an arm and a leg. The choices that he's made are very simplistic, but very, very powerful now. And I think that that should never be lost is that we can, it's, uh, it's, it's the most effective dose now. It's all about dosage, right? So if we, if we provide, you know, if I gave you a pill uh, that was one gram um, or I gave you 10 pills that were 100 milligrams, it's like 10 pills are more arduous. We have to take those all the time, but we could just take the one pill for one gram and call it a day. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing. What we're seeing is people are like, well, we have this amazingly potent drug, if you will, this piece of exercise equipment, ARX, and we can only need to add one or two other things to it. And we don't really need to add more square footage because we have this really potent drug. So let's just get people in uh, and get them on this dosage of ARX or this dosage of exercise, one machine, two machines, four exercises in and out, and only keep it in a really small square footage. Not a lot on front capital. And then if they want to grow, they have the client base to do so. And we've seen this a few times now uh, in the last year or so. People are starting to, you know, I got 80 clients. I got 100 clients. The 500 square foot place, it's getting a little cramped. I want to expand. I want to add new trainers. I want to add more technologies. But this is all down the line for those people. Initially, they did not have the capital or the clientele to serve the business. Uh, and so now they do a year or two later. And they're looking to add on all those other things, which cost you know, X amount of dollars more. But it always starts, tends to start extremely like bare bones, but very potent. It cannot be uh, yeah, downplayed, like how, how amazing it can be in just a very small room now. And that's what technology can do for us. It's, it's the same thing with your cell phone. Ten years ago, 
right? Like the cell phone was impressive. The first iPhone came out and you're like, whoa, this is amazing. Um, but it wasn't incredible. Like it wasn't incredibly, it, it wasn't more powerful than my desktop was. Now the lap, or my cell phone sitting next to me is probably like four times faster than my, uh, my laptop or my desktop. <laughs> I have older technology. So, I mean, that's, that's what technology allows us to do and allows us access to is an entirely new business model, entirely new way to go to market. You don't need to go down the path of the old and have 20 treadmills in a room. Uh, and that, and we could talk a little bit more about like what people are wanting these days and what's actually serving them. But like that model is dying, the big box gym and the people that are starting this groundswell of the very small, efficient, cost-effective facilities, they're all getting getting off the ground with not a lot of upfront capital. And then down the line, that's when they invest. That's when they add more to the business, add more people, trainers, et cetera. So that's that's kind of the trend that we've seen. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, uh, it's exciting and uh, to see. So, you know, I know that um, uh, myself and a lot of the listeners will be skeptical about a lot of these new fancy technologies um, and their actual benefits. Uh, it you know, there is obviously a body of um, scientific literature growing to um, demonstrate the benefits of a lot of this stuff. Um, but sure. it would still, it would seem there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, so I know that a lot of my listeners would be like, oh, do you really need all that extra stuff? Um, I know you're pretty into biohacking, Mike. So what, what stuff do you do all of this stuff as well? Like all this stuff alongside like an ARX routine yourself? Uh, no. And I think to the people out there who are thinking, and we get these these comments all the time. Um, they're like, Oh, you know, I just, I, all I need is, you know, a chin up bar and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and do some push ups, and then life is great. And I stay strong my whole life. That's fantastic. ARX has no issues with any of that. We have no issues with really anybody out there who's attempting to do it the right way, uh, to do good work, to maintain a healthy bone structure, muscle structure, uh, there's a lot of ways to get to where we want to go, but the problem becomes is really, uh, with, at least when it comes to ARX, uh, we look at it like the, the type of stimulus that you're receiving from this perfectly loaded uh, concentric and eccentric, the negative part, uh, that can't be mimicked with a chin-up bar. Like you can do slower negatives with your body weight and you can accentuate the, the negative, but you can't perfect the negative. And that is an entirely different ball game. Um, it's, it's not until you've done your first uh, perfectly loaded leg press negative on ARX do you realize, oh my God, I've never, I've never experienced this. Uh, no matter how much weight you load positively, you typically don't add 20, 50, 100 percent of that just for a microsecond on the way down. So that's a new stimulus. That's a new offering uh, that can't be mimicked. So if you want, you can totally try to, to mimic it with different ways, of chains and bands and, and all that stuff. But it, you're never going to get there. It's, it's not possible to do as, I mean, we, we're changing resistances uh, every microsecond. So no matter how many people you have to push down on the bar in a bench press to accentuate your negative, you're not going to perfectly match your capability. And then what's... The difference between your first rep, your fifth rep, your 10th rep as you fatigue, all of those things need to be accounted for, uh, for that perfectly loaded positive and negative. So AirX just takes care of all that. We give it to you in this, you know, tiny, small package, you know, a couple square feet, and you just get this huge response from it. But by no means do you have to start your business, uh, with AirX machines on the forefront of like, you know, I got to have them in there before we can open our doors. The tried and true still works. It always works. It always will work. Uh, but if you're trying to push the boundaries of, in particular, like the, the time of your load and how long it takes to actually achieve the results, um, the fully loaded stimulus that we're looking for, then ARX is going to cut that in a fraction of the time. Even the, uh, the body by science method, even like using a great Nautilus and medics, it still cuts that in a fraction of the time. And then we also, you asked about like, how do we know if this works? It's like the fancy da dancey stuff that's out there that everyone's pushing on Instagram and uh, try to show you their latest tech. Um, a lot of it isn't 
necessary. Uh, but the other side of it is like the stuff that we choose to add to our world, in particular my world, uh, I need to see I need to see value immediately. And if I can see that physically, either through like blood tests or um, my mood or body composition, I mean, all that stuff are great metrics. But what I love about ARX is that I step on and when I first started, I mean, I saw a 160% increase in the course of a year in almost all of my numbers. So that, whether or not I believed it worked, I couldn't argue with myself. Like the numbers were right there. And that's that's what I look for. Things that are actually going to give me a quantified proof that this is actually changing something. This is actually benefiting me in a way that I otherwise couldn't find somewhere uh, down the street. So my long-winded way of saying like, it's got to have a quantification to it. It has to have some good research to it. And um, those are the things that pass the first barrier for me. And then uh, I feel like ARX is, has both of those. And that's always been why I just fell in love with it from day one. Because I just was tired of of not knowing <laughs> about all this other stuff. And you see the Muscle and Fitness magazine and they tell you one one routine is better than the other. And I had to always just read an article and and wonder, like, how do you know? Like, I don't look like that guy on the, on the, the cover of the magazine. I don't eat like that guy in the cover of the magazine. Like, how do you know this is going to work the same for me? And so that eventually when I arrived at what ARX can offer me, it was like, oh, man, at least now it's this very uh, objective set of uh, numbers that we're tracking. And that's that's so it's just it's so relaxing (laughs) to know that I'm actually getting the thing that I want out of this workout and that it can consistently work for me really till that till the day I die just because of the inherent, uh, just of what it is inherently. So yeah, it's got to work and it's got to be quantified. Do you want to like elaborate on the quantification side of things? Like what, because this is one of the coolest parts of the equipment. Um, what, we are, what type of things can, can we quantify? And how does that work over time? Like how does that help with performance and progress? You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, so what's great is... Uh, instead of like, let's just take like a standard, a standard setup that most people probably are, are going through right now. Um, and I think we talked about this either. Uh, yeah. Last time we were on the phone together was we've all kind of arrived at the same, same idea of like, yeah, we got to go, we got to increase the intensity. Right. But then like, Oh, we got to use this particular piece of technology, whether that be, some people do it with a barbell and then they're like, yeah, it's a little easier to do with the machine. And then which machine do I ultimately choose? And um, at the end of the day, it's you versus the weight. And if you have a trainer with you and then the trainer is choosing that weight for you. So now you're, you have all these variables that we're guessing on. And that's just really, really difficult to guess correctly every day, all the time. And when we, when we change the resistance, we go to this motorized resistance um, that can constantly adapt to us positively, negatively, 100% of the time, all the time, no matter what time of day. Uh, and we can control for all the variables, such as speed positive. So we can do a five second positive, we can do a seven second negative, we can do five and five both ways, we can do a three second pause after each rep. We can change all these variables and keep them consistent. Uh, at the end of the day, then it just becomes it's it's me versus me instead of me versus the weight or me versus the weight that the trainer chose uh, for me. Those things don't they lead to down a, a dangerous rabbit hole a lot of times where we feel like, uh, yeah, we just we, we encounter things that otherwise we shouldn't be encountering. So first rep, it's like, yeah, this hundred pounds weight was perfect for me. Uh, but second rep, maybe I needed 80 pounds. Third rep, maybe I needed 70 pounds. But I still have 100 pounds in the bar. So what do I do? I start squirming in the seat in the bench press and like trying to, you know, throw my hip into it to get the bar up and do all sorts of things um, that could potentially injure us. And that's where I think just the weight world, CrossFit, whoever is out there uh, throwing weights around, ultimately just get a bad name. Is it if they chose the right weight? Uh, the first rep, but they didn't choose the right weight on the 10th rep. And that doesn't mean that it's their fault. It's just, that's the inherent problem of a weight. 
So with ARX, when we talk about quantification, uh, we're, we don't choose anything. Well, I mean, we, I guess we choose the range of motion and we can choose the time, but once those are set, uh, it's, you're free to just push as hard as you'd like or as little as you'd like. In the moment, you can change your intensity from 100% to 0% and nothing will happen. Well, one thing will happen. The number on the screen will go down. And so we can see all that and it just plays out. And if you decide to do that mid, mid chest press, you're like, ah, oh, my shoulder feels a little weird. You could just back off and let go and you're in complete safety to do so. And then we just track those numbers. We're like, oh yeah, look at that second rep. That was the one where your shoulder felt a little weird and we just backed off. Um, and that's why it's lower than uh, the other reps. We can track all of that real time, uh, 15 times per second is what we're tracking. And so over time, we can look at what's the highest point of maximum force for both your positive and your negative. And then we can track all the slope of each one of those points to say, how much do you fatigue from your first rep, second rep, fifth rep, 10th rep, uh, again, on the negative and on the positive. So we, we see this rate of fatigue and you'd be like 40% fatigue on the negative and like 60% on the concentric on the positive. So we see all this play out. It sounds really complicated, but it's in fact the opposite. It's so simple and easy. All you do is press to whatever capability you have today, right now in the moment, and the software and the machine take care of the rest. And then we just have that number the next time that we show up at the facility to try to beat. And so I'm trying to beat numbers from last week, a month ago, uh, a year ago, if I want. And if let's, this is great for injury recovery. This is great for uh, if you're going through a rough, a rough patch in life and you're super stressed and, but you know what your best felt like. Now we know exactly what your best, uh, like quantifiably looked like. And so we can say, let's go back, not a week ago, because remember a week ago, you didn't really feel that good. Um, let's not compare to that. Let's compare to your best ever, which might have been three weeks ago or three months ago. And we're going to try to beat that line. So that's our, that's our baseline that we're always trying to track and follow. And we could do that instantaneously. And we have this great record and log that's all digital, all online, and uh, all the other variables are taking care of us for us. So we just, we just sit down and press, just give our best effort. So that's what we're quantifying. That's what we're looking at. And that's kind of the experience of, of dealing with uh, the numbers every day with ARX. Cool. And I love that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely um, becoming a convert as I listen to you. So one of the things that made me laugh at you, what you said is, um, that you're even cutting down the body by science time. And this is so like hilarious to hear because people can't believe body by science when they see it, because even, right. <laughs> even, even now high intensity strength training is still relatively unknown. Um, for some strange reason. And, um, you know, the, for anyone, well, most listeners will know this, but the front cover of body by science says 12 minutes a week. And, um, you know, just recently some, uh, health and fitness idiot, um, who I won't name cause I can't actually remember his name. And otherwise I probably would, um, you know, did a YouTube video where he talked about how he was at some networking thing and some guy said to him, Hey, I've been doing body by science and it's like amazing. Um, and he cut his volume right down and this guy said, Oh, that's probably a load of rubbish. And he just dismissed it. He didn't even like, you know, use any kind of critical thinking skills and keep an open mind and, and actually listen to the guy, uh, and, and read the book. And, and it's just done the guy a huge disservice to be honest with you. Uh, and some of the listeners may know who I'm talking about, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. Um, it's it's just funny to me because that's 12 minutes a week and any any of us you know who've been doing high intensity training will know that that has to be like that in some cases because of the intensity and, and you're saying that actually ARX is even more efficient um and the workouts can be even shorter in some cases is that true 100% yeah how yeah, how and, sure are we talking uh well i mean it's really up to you right and so the stimulus is is there for you if you want, right? It's the perfect stimulus. We don't have to, I mean, anybody who's familiar with the body by science world or just the high intensity training world, evidence-based training is what you're calling it now. I like that. Um, <laughs> I like where you're taking that these days. But all of that is backed by, by plenty of people. I mean, like, what are we talking, 30 years now? Uh, 30 plus years worth of people who are 
or shouting from the mountaintops that like, oh my God, this is, this works. So, and now we have research behind that. And that's, that's, that's already been settled science in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, But the problem is, is that we've settled that science with technology as good as it is um, for what it is, is still not perfect. Yeah. The cam was originally designed for variable resistance, right? So it, when we designed the cam, we knew there was a problem that the resistance had to change throughout the the range of motion. But unless the weight also changes as well, it doesn't account for fatigue. So the first rep cam feels great. This is smooth. Everything's going great. But when we talk about like muscular failure in just in general, I mean, we're typically talking about concentric failure, which is typically due to, uh, the mechanics of the machine failing yeah. us, not necessarily the muscles failing us. So it's as good as we can do with a weight-based system, cam-based uh, setup when we're dealing with weights. But with ARX, what we've noticed, and again, I love when people are like, I don't believe you. Fantastic. <laughs> Please do not believe me at all. I do not want you to take my word for it. Uh, we have the greatest convincer of all time, and that's our software, and that's the data. So when I show somebody who's very skeptical of my workouts, I bring up my data log and every one of my leg presses for when I first started back four or five years ago was, you know, I went on a spree for about a year and a half where I did two minutes exactly every time. And there it is. There's the 18 months or whatever it was. Uh, all of them are two minutes long, and we control for all these variables. And I show them my first workout, my 20th workout, and then I show them where I'm at today, uh, you know, 18 months later. And there it is. It's 183% or whatever it was uh, better. And not only that, but we can see the graph. So I didn't fudge the numbers. I didn't write down uh, incorrect numbers or I'm not lying, you know, in a log with a pen and pencil. Um these are tracked and these are the things that happen. This is just a log of the experience that I created for this uh, in that workout. The data tells all the truth. Like there's nothing more to it, really. It's at, if you still have a problem, you still don't think that that's uh, that's real. Well, then I invite you to try it for yourself. And that I am still batting a thousand on. Uh, nobody who's ever tried ARX has walked away and not been blown away by it. Because it's something that you've never felt before. And then I can start getting into the ideas of like, there's an entire side of training you've never even experienced, the eccentric side. You've never resisted at your maximum. Some people go their entire life never doing that. No matter how much weight you lift, unless you're lowering more weight, uh, you're not going to ever know what it feels like to have a perfectly uh, matched eccentric negative. I mean, it is, it's, it's a world changer. And then it opens up tons of ideas of like, okay, well, so like I, we see people all the time at conventions and stuff, you know, very strong, large hypertrophic humans that carry a bunch of muscle mass and they'll step up to, a, you know, a chest press, leg press, whatever. And we'll watch the numbers and they push at a great, at a great number. Um, but then the resistance is almost the same number on the way back. And uh, our team will kind of look at each other and we'll like chuckle because they're like, oh, this guy it's sad. Like, it's really sad. Like he works so hard to, to build that concentric side, but he doesn't know that there's probably a hundred percent more effort on the negative side if you would just train it, but he doesn't have the tool to do so. So he'll, I'll, I'll step on (laughs) and I'll do twice as much on the negative. Now I'm not twice as strong as that guy. Uh, overall, if I was to train him, he would easily, easily surpass me, right? He has the genetics, the gift, um, he has way, way much, or much higher ceiling than I do. But I've trained myself to max capacity on both ends of the equation. So that's, that's where I, I just invite people to really look at the numbers and see what we're actually tracking. And I mean, we're happy to send anybody, uh, you know, comparison views. Um, Skylar's got some great ones of some really elderly people who've completely changed uh, there are force output capabilities in six months. I mean, these are, these are just stories we hear over and over again. So at this point, this, 
yeah, the science is the science. We know that this stuff works. Now, just how do we perfect it? And I think that's really what we've accomplished with, uh, with adaptive resistance. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, ARX. Are you looking to create a cutting edge, high intensity training facility? Are you confused on what equipment to use or how to separate yourself from the masses? Well, then ARX Fit might be the answer you're looking for. I asked Mike Palano from ARX a few questions about how ARX machines are challenging the status quo of the exercise industry around the globe. Mike, if you could, give the listeners a quick summary of why ARX is so different from the traditional machines or tools they're used to seeing in most exercise facilities. ARX is totally different than anything you've seen before. This isn't just another weight stack machine. We've looked at the last 40 years of exercise technology and used that knowledge to create something entirely new. ARX uses a new form of resistance, a motor, and we pair that motor with computer software so that we can maximize the safety, effectiveness, and efficiency of your workouts. So you may be asking, okay, but how does ARX compare to weights? Traditional machines you see in gyms today are based on lifting metal weights and battling gravity. What people don't realize is that when you're forced to lift a static weight like this, one that doesn't adapt or change while you use it, you're underloading yourself rep after rep. And this unnecessarily limits your ability to make improvements. With ARX, we've taken a totally different approach. We removed weights and gravity from the equation altogether. Instead, ARX combines our patented motorized resistance with our custom computer software to provide you with the world's safest, most effective, and most quantified form of resistance training ever. When you train with ARX, you are training to your perfect level of resistance both positively and negatively, 100% of the time. No more guessing what weight to use, ARX does all of that for you, instantly and automatically. We'll also track and measure every second of every rep, so you can quantify all of your workouts to find out if you're improving and by exactly how much. Whether your goals are bigger muscles, increased strength, stronger bones, or just to look good in a bathing suit, ARX can help you achieve all of these and more, but do so in a fraction of the time it would take compared to traditional equipment. If you're looking for the most efficient, most effective, and most quantified piece of exercise equipment on the market today, then look no further than ARX. Thanks, Mike. That all sounds really impressive. If you'd like to learn more about ARX, visit arxfit.com and mention that you heard about ARX on the Corporate Warrior podcast to receive an exclusive deal of $500 off shipping and installation off your ARX machines. Where, where I, I guess I'm slightly skeptical is firstly, you know, if you've been training on the machine for a number of years, you're going to have the skill down, you know, sure. like every machine has a skill aspect. Um, so a lot of that negative strength is because you're, you know, you're, you're becoming very good at the skill. And another, I, I would, I would kind of challenge you and almost disagree that I don't think people that are using gravity based equipment or barbells or machines that they're not getting a good negative workout because I just feel like it's less efficient. I feel like, yeah, I totally agree with you. Like you're matching the strength curve, um, better potentially with, with ARX or not potentially you probably are. Um, but I still feel like, you know, if you're using a very well designed machine, uh, maybe you need to do slightly more volume. Maybe it's less efficient. Maybe you need to do multiple sets. Um, but it's like, you know, why, for instance, let me give an example. So why, let's say you did concentric chin-ups to failure and then you did four or five like negative sets, like, you know, 30 second eccentric sets um, so that you pretty much couldn't hold your body weight up anymore and you were just falling down. I mean, mm -hmm. if you remove, I know there's concerns over safety and efficiency, but if you remove those things, you're still, in my opinion, going to get an equally effective workout at the end of the day. Is that not true? I, I would say equally is the operative word in there. Because <laughs> um, at no point in time, you're, you're still dealing with the static weight, right? So unless unless you're finding some way to vary the resistance that I'm not familiar of, uh, or familiar with, then your body weight is still the limiting factor. So yeah, you will have to do a lot of volume and you can absolutely fatigue the negative that way, but you're not going to perfectly fatigue it. And you're sure as heck not going to get that, uh, that top end of eccentric force because 
frankly, you don't even know what that is. And that's where I, I, I mean, I'll push, push at, you know, let's just say a thousand, but I'll resist at, you know, 2200 just for like a very, very small microsecond. I am my frame and my structure, my muscles, my bones and everything connected are taking on that load. Uh, and then it's changing. It's, it's gone in a second. And then it's now it's 2100, 2000, 1900. That, that's a different ball game that we're talking about. You can get there. Do not get me wrong. You can absolutely get there. I felt just as white doing body weight work uh, than I have on ARX, but it's a different sensation and it's ultimately a different stimulus that I'm receiving. And your original question, which is how can this possibly be more efficient? That's the reason is that this stimulus is constantly changing and giving us exactly what we need 100% of the time. And we don't need all that extra volume anymore. It's, it's a perfect rep every time. There's no time where you pick up a dumbbell and you're like, well, the first, you know, I'm going to do three sets of 10 today. And the first two sets are, you're just breezing through them, right? We're just, we're just trying to create a little volume, create a little stimulus. And then eventually you guess the right weight and then you find the right resistance. And then we, we fail at rep, you know, 28, 29 and 30. Just, um, no, that's true. That is a good, uh, good response. And, um, just something that's come up, to, come into my mind, which I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, there's a lot, obviously, as, as, as we know, I don't really want to mention names, but there's a lot of guys doing research in terms of what are the optimal approaches for hypertrophy. Yeah. Um, and there, but they often talk about that in the context of multiple sets. Um, and you know more traditional weight training exercises have you had much in a way of pushback or feedback from that group because this is obviously very very aligned with high intensity training and 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 typically single set to failure type training and it's even more so in this case because like you say the the um resistance curves are so closely matched that uh, it's even more efficient than before. So have you had much in the way of pushback or feedback from that group that I mentioned? At all? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say we've had any pushback, um, but we also ha- haven't had a ton of feedback. Uh, what I would love to see is uh, a group to to take an ARX machine and, and try to repeat a lot of those studies. Cause I have a feeling that a lot of those, a lot of those will play out to be true, but they'll actually be, uh, quantified now in a way that they weren't before. I mean, anybody who reads enough research knows uh, you start digging in and you're looking at the, uh, the study design and the cohorts that they used. And, you know, there's always standard deviations that they're throwing out there, right? So that's that's good science. And that's as good as they can do with, with the bar, the barbell or, you know, the biodex leg extension or whatever they're using. Uh, but this is a whole nother set of quantification that we can add to that and i would love to see if whether or not uh the research that we're doing in the weight world actually proves itself out on arx or if we unlock some things that otherwise weren't known um, because we were using a more traditional tool like a weight i have a feeling of which way it would go but i'd rather that they just uh, they would just did. go <laughs> and, yeah they'd show prove me prove me right or wrong uh, all i know is is that the combination of a perfect negative and now a perfect positive and everything in between, um, I get to the point of quote unquote failure uh, so much quicker than I ever did before. And then I quantify that fatigue, that inroad every time I exercise. So I'm like, oh, today was a 35% inroad. And 35%, you're like, oh, well, why don't you go to zero? Well, you can't really ever get to zero. Otherwise, you'd be dead. But you can absolutely like keep going to deeper inroads. But for me, that just doesn't seem like it's actually benefiting me in the future on my future yeah. workouts. The stimulating I've gone to, Right. So like if I can just, just get the minimal effect of dose, um, and I know what that dosage is each time. And for me, it's roughly around like 30 to 40% of uh, eccentric fatigue then I don't keep working out just for the sake of doing it. Just because somebody told me that I had to do three sets of 10, I'm not going to just finish it because, well, that's what somebody told me or that's what a magazine or that's what my protocol is. Sometimes I'll cut my workout short 
if I reach that fatigue in, you know, six uh, reps versus, you know, last week I, I reached it in 12 reps. I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm very under recovered. Like I, I did the same workout last week in twice. It took me twice as long to reach that fatigue. And I'm just watching that percentage go down with each rep. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> you know, last weekend's catching up with me and I shouldn't have gone out and I got <laughs> poor sleep. And all of a sudden, and I'm like, I'm already at my 30% number way before I thought I was going to be when this, we always say like when the steak is done, like when it's cooked, like take it off the grill. Like you don't need to just keep going for the sake of going. That's and that's what the software, that's what the software really does for you. It gives you that incredible real time feedback to know, okay, we're hitting a number today. We're hitting a number of fatigue or a total amount of output today. And then we're cutting it. And we know what that is as we're, as we're working out instead of a total guess uh, that we decided before the workout that this is what we're doing today. I think, yeah, and I asked when I, I remember interview, when I interviewed Mark, uh, Mark Alexander ages ago, um, I remember briefly talking about um, what I thought was really exciting about what you're doing, which is the ability to record data across all of the businesses that you partner with and then all of their clients and then potentially um, collect all that big data in the cloud and actually, um, you know, interpret it and use it to, um, figure out, you know, what is the optimal kind of approach to um, designing training protocols for people? Um, I'm guessing since I spoke to Mark, that's probably come along a little bit. I'm sure there's there's um, potentially issues with um, data being private and stuff like that. I don't know. Do you want to, is that something that you guys do? Or could you want to elaborate on on how you might be using this data for the for bettering exercise for everyone in terms of being able to um, bring it all together up in the cloud and uh, interpret it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or interrogate, that's, I should say. <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely, uh, It's that's the mission down the line. Uh, right now, we're definitely aggregating a lot of data. Um, there are a lot of people. So you got to remember, we've, we've rolled out some new things in the last few years, uh, one of which is our automatic mode. And wh what that allows us to do is before we had a lot of people, you know, doing, let's just say 10 sets of leg press. Um, but they were screwing up with each rep. So they had to physically control the machine. Uh, so that'd be a trainer pushing a button back and forth and they would screw up all the time, just naturally, just being human. Right. And so you didn't get the exact same workout every time. So then your numbers ultimately wouldn't actually be consistent from workout to workout, just like slightly off. So if we're really talking about talking about like research and, and looking at that component, um, it's, it's, you need, you need to be able to control for many more variables, uh, time in and time again, as of last year, now we have automatic mode, it gets rid of all of that uh, user error and it just runs this perfect program. And what I think is going to happen now, now that we've gotten uh, a whole bunch of people using that and a lot of people are running the same types of protocols and you know, we have a, a Facebook group and just generally when we interact with our clients, like they're always asking us, hey, what do you think about this protocol, that protocol? Uh, what's amazing is most of the time we don't talk to our clients for a while or our customers and then they'll come back and they'll arrive at the same thing that we arrived here in Austin with amongst our own personal team. We're like, yeah, you know, I don't really know why I would really do more than, you know, 12 total reps uh, in a workout. And so maybe that's two sets of six, or maybe it's one full go of it and you just rip all 12 out or three sets of four. I mean, but the total volume and the total amount of inroad and the total time under load tend to be roughly in the same ranges. Uh, it's also equivalent to a lot of the same ranges that you read in Body by Science or you hear in, in our little sphere here in the hit world. We're proving those out all the time. Uh, and also we're disproving a couple other ones too. We're saying like, no, that's really not true. You know, like 90 seconds is good, but it may not be optimal. Um, you could get a benefit, but what's, what's the most benefit I can get out of this? And so if I do a 90 second workout on ARX, it's like, yeah, I feel good, but like I only fatigued 5% maybe today. Well, I need to keep going, right? So we don't try to hold a dogmatic approach. We just let the data uh, dictate to us, um, you know, what we should be doing or should we continue on. And as we grow the user base, more and more of those people are all looking at those numbers 
And eventually what we'll do is probably do like a meta, a meta study where we can take a lot of people who have a specific cohort, run them all through the same exact protocol on the same machine that's all calibrated to the same level. And we can really start to garner some really awesome insights into what is working for people. Um, and as that continues on in the world, right, like blood testing is more accessible now. There's DEXA scans in more cities so we can look at bone neural density and lean muscle mass gains. Um, there's so many aggregate technologies that can be added to the study uh, that we can really look forward to some really good actionable data um, that will either prove or disprove the stuff that came up uh, before it. So that's kind of where we're thinking about it in the future. But a lot of that was the mechanical side. A lot of that was the product side, um, just building the foundation and getting it all to work uh, in unison and also to have a very consistent experience across all the machines. So we're there now. And it, it's, it's an amazing it's amazing to think about what we can now accomplish uh, as a collective and not just as one company, you know, selling machines. Cool. Um, you know, you've got as a there's a few competitors I can see coming out of the woodwork. Um, you know, certainly, obviously, being being very much in uh, the center in a, in a podcasting sense. Um, you know, I do get obviously people message me about you know alternative machines. You know, what sure. what, what makes and I don't I can't even remember many off the top of my head to be honest um, in terms of the the brands, but. You know, you obviously see these coming up. Um, do you consider ARX to be a leader, and what makes it different and potentially better than the competition, in your view? Yeah. So, with any good piece of technology, right, competitors will will absolutely show up, and frankly, we we welcome everybody into this world with us. Uh, ARX is the first to do what we're doing in terms of the whole process of our software, what we track experience that we provide, the organization of our um, machines and how we've built them. I mean, nobody's doing what we are doing currently, uh, but that will change. Absolutely. And as that does, what we're going to see is what we talked about before this podcast is there's a huge trend coming where we're getting the word out and we're one of the, one of the first people to do this, that the stimulus that we've been using, the tried and true, uh, isn't 100% optimal. And if we can have a better stimulus and a better experience that keeps us safe the whole time, that quantifies our data, I mean, this is we're 2018 now. I mean, we're moving to a new generation um, who expects the same progression in their workout they expect from their iPhone, right? They don't <laughs> want the same iPhone from 20 years ago. They want a brand new iPhone that does brand new things and keeps pushing the, the envelope in terms of what is possible using whatever technology is available to us in 2019, 2020, you know, 2030, whatever. Uh, that that's it's it's all it's almost it's like it's very sad for us that we've just kind of all accepted this state of affairs. And so, yeah, I would love to see more people do what we're doing. Um, it will benefit the masses. Uh, we are the first, though, and we're the first in the thoughts. We're, we we want to be a thought leader. We want to be the people out there who are who are looking to devise those studies with the Brad Schoenfelds of the world. Um, I just talked to Andy Galpin at Paleo FX. I mean, a lot of those people are starting to pay attention to this idea because I mean it's super intriguing. But it will assuredly have a curve that will take some time, um, and it, we want to be on the front of that, and we are on the front of that, uh, kind of dictating, you know, what what the new pieces of equipment should look like, uh, what new things should we track. What new uh, like protocol should we start instilling and in, in offering up to our customers into the world to say, let's go test out you know forty percent in road and see what happens or create something brand new uh, all together. So this is this is the world that we're in, and we're happy to be the, the leaders of it, but we know that there's going to be people behind us. Um, yeah, that the best that we can do is build the best product possible, and we have the most experience doing that in the world. And we'll continue to uh, try to stay on the front of it for for as long as we can. Do you know what I think? I think you will win. And you'll win because you're first. Simple as. <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said for that in every industry, right? Yeah. Uh, so we definitely want to to capitalize on that as, as much as we can. Yeah. But we're, we're also not ignorant to the idea that there will be people that want to try to create knockoffs of this. Um, 
typically those are cheaper and uh, cheaper in terms of like the experience and they, they take things away. Um, we want to always provide the, the absolute best experience for our customer. Um, but also then if, if we've, if we've garnered enough uh, momentum in that world, like we can also take, and Mark's talked about this multiple times, um, you know, take different approaches to the market and look at home users and look at, uh, yeah, just all sorts of different, different avenues for, for us to penetrate the market. But right now we're the only ones who are, who are really doing it the way uh, we feel like it should be done. And with that comes, yeah, the first to market, the benefits. Yeah. Um, no, that's interesting. And uh, it's exciting to see you know, where things will end up uh, or not end up because obviously it's a, a continuous journey, but uh, excited to see what the, the future holds for ARX. Um, I guess one final uh, discussion point I wanted to address with you, Mike, uh, is something that obviously my listeners are very passionate about is, um, you know, this pursuit of optimal muscle hypertrophy. Um, you know, just to get a bit of context, obviously my podcast has explored this over a long period of time. You know, when I started doing this show, I wasn't really very aware about the limitations of genetics. Um, and, you yeah. know, I felt like I thought there was more difference in protocols than there really is. Uh, and I've kind of come to understand that, you know, as Skylar Tanner would say, it's a... Uh, uh, biology is the limitation, not the protocol. Um, I think that's how we said it. I might have completely butchered that. Um, sure. and, and, and obviously that's true. We know that just seeing, looking at, you know, the genetics and the, and the research in that area, we, we can see that that is like the main determining kind of factor when it comes to optimal gains. However, um, you know, we, we're still interested in understanding where we can move the needle, even by the smallest amount, so long as that doesn't mean that we have to work out 20 times a week and uh, eat protein every hour. Um, so, and I remember talking to, I think you might have said this to me a bit, and uh, I know Jason's a, a big fan too. And Jason, for those that don't know, is the, the CMO for ARX. Um, you know, but I think both of you have mentioned to me, certainly Jason has, that he's got incredible, uh, in fact, I know you have, Mike, actually, now that I remember, um, you know, a lot of gains uh, in terms of muscle hypertrophy from doing ARX. And, you know, you hear that, right? And, uh, you know, I'm a big, big fan of, of yourself and obviously Jason. So I'm, um, I'm not, this isn't a slight against you guys, but, but obviously you do work for ARX. So it's like people hear that and think, well, of course those guys are going to say that they're biased, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which is totally understandable that people would think that. Um, and everyone's highly skeptical because they've been told if they're certainly, if they're a long time listener to the show that, you know, ARX is not, whilst it's a very good tool and, you know, good tool in terms of training muscles to fatigue and doing it in a very efficient way. And I love all that. It's perhaps not going to be superior for muscle hypertrophy versus any other tool but but i feel like you guys disagree with that that statement so do you want to give your thoughts and i know we've talked about it a little bit already in terms of the negative but i'd love to hear you how you how you think about that stuff yeah and i'll, I'll Big question <laughs> I, no i'll immediately say that uh by no means no one on our team are you know uh hypertrophy experts right sure. there are plenty of people that dedicate an entire career to that um, of which you've had almost all of them on this podcast. I would <laughs> highly recommend that you go back. Uh, if you're wondering the answer to this question, uh, Lawrence has done a great job of really putting together kind of the who's who in that world. Um, what I'm always curious about is what I hear people talk about studies when it comes to hypertrophy and the best set rep foundations and um, what they find is uh, we have a lot of real, we don't have research level uh, data, but we have a lot of real life data. And it's not just from our team. I mean, these are people we've trained. Uh, Mark, our CEO, has had two facilities in Austin, Texas that uh, Mark's been training for 16 years there. Uh, but ARX has been there for eight years, if I recall correctly. So this is by no means a new technology that is like, oh, we got to wait and see like what happens with this. We see people grow. <laughs> we see people grow. Uh, grow via DEXA scan. So we actually see the data that come back and they're like, yeah, you know, I added bone mineral density, but man, I put on three pounds of lean mass and I come here once a week. So what we always try to uh, entice our customers to do is, is get together with a local uh, DEXA scan company. Um, they're kind of the gold standard, Bod Pod. There's a whole bunch of them uh, that you can utilize out there, but uh, DEXA is the least evasive in our, 
in our opinion, and go and find a place like that to do a pre and post uh, with your customers. And we see this over and over again. In fact, we have a, a company called Dexa Fit. Uh, they're out of the States and they have Dexa machines throughout multiple cities. Um, and just in Minneapolis, though, they've done a pilot program where they have two ARX machines in one room and they have a Dexa scanner in the other room. And then they have this other machine called the Fit 3D uh, that will actually kind of, it's like the caliper test, right? To see whether or not your, your inches are going up or down because you can add muscle mass. Uh, and you may not see it <laughs> because you might have other things on there, like too much fat mass uh, covering it all. Um, and vice versa, if you're trying to lose fat and add muscle, like it changes all throughout the whole body. Uh, and your arms might get smaller, but your legs might get bigger. And so it'll measure all the, the actual digital readout of all of the inches, um, circumferences and things of that sort. So they've been doing this probably for almost a year now. And anytime I talk to Brandon up there, <laughs> he's just got another story for me. That's incredible. His story was like, he put on 13 pounds of uh, lean mass in the course of six months, right? He is one of the execs for the company. So he doesn't have a ton of time to actually be working out. And he's just cranking through workouts, doing um, simple one, one set each move. Um, I think he was doing a once a week protocol and he was just doing DEXs like every month to figure out where he was trending. And after that, it was like 13 pounds. And then he has a, a 10 other ones after me, uh, after that one of all those people with, with similar results, you know, five pounds here, four pounds here, 12 pounds there. But it's this, it's, it's the don't trust me. Um, let's let the data be the truth. And so we just keep seeing this process over and over again. And most people are doing like a really good one, one workout a week. Um, at max, most people are doing that uh, or people will do twice a week. And it's just proving out what we already know now using different tools, uh, other than just measuring with, a, you know, a caliper um, or a, a tape measure around my bicep. I, I love when I hear like the latest meta study that Schoenfeld puts out or any of those guys, because like, it's like, oh, we can go try that now on ARX and then we can actually test it to see. Have we done that? No, it's, it's a very complicated process in order to recreate those things. Um, but I wouldn't doubt that somebody does that very, very soon and in, in the coming year or two uh, where they're actually trying to replicate those things and figure out what did we get right? What did we get wrong? And we have this great tool as a diagnostic to find out exactly by how much. So I don't know if I kind of skated your question, but also answered it at the same time. No, you did. I think um, so. It's interesting follow up question to that is that's awesome that like all those people can actually see their lean gains based on um, DEXA scans and then uh, obviously looking at how that's really correlating with improvements in strength on the actual um, the actual software. But what I guess I'm interested in asking is many of my listeners will have been doing strength training and probably high intensity training for five, ten years, maybe longer. Right. I, it's my opinion based, and, and this is, you know, I've only used RX a couple of times. So, you know, it's a, a limited opinion at that, um, that if you're already someone who's been doing that level of strength training and it also, you know, you hear a lot of anecdotes of people and I'm not even, I'm even skeptical of these, to be honest, um, that people that go from high volume training, you know, four or five sessions a week to maybe one or two sessions a week, they're more intense, like a body by science approach, um, or, you know, any high intensity training approach that then claim also to get gains during that phase. When I actually think that, you know, vast majority of the gains obviously come within the first, uh, first couple of years of training, regardless of the protocol. Um, sure. So I'm I'm all, I'm always a bit skeptical of that, uh, and always think people are kind of a little bit biased about their own results. So anyway, long long question made shorter. Um, so I guess I, I'm wondering, do you think anyone who has been training for a long period of time or been doing high intensity training for a long period of time um, is actually going to get greater gains moving to ARX? I mean, I'm not doubting for a second that they won't be able to maintain or get stronger. Um, and, and obviously make them work more efficient, but are they actually going to see great hypertrophy, do you believe? In my opinion, you always, if you're going to look at hypertrophy, right, like you, you need the best stimulus possible is what you're always trying to seek so that you can get the best possible result, right? So stimu stimulus uh, 
adaptation, stimulus adaptation. Yeah. So if we're trying to get a better adaptation, we probably need to look at how to get a better stimulus. Um, but then this goes back to what we originally talked about, where let's say we optimize the stimulus with ARX. And I do believe it is a more optimized stimulus than weights can provide. Um, by how much? I have no idea. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But I absolutely know that we're hitting levels of stimulus that can cannot typically safely be reached uh, in pretty much any facility you're going to walk into. You're just not going to be able to do it. Um, and you're sure as heck not going to be able to quantify it. So if we have a great stimulus, awesome. Uh, but the adaptation is where people tend to fall off the map and they just keep searching for a better stimulus, a better stimulus, this new rep range, this new protocol, whatever. Uh, but then they get a little lost because, yeah, that's just one way to create a signal. But if the adaptation doesn't happen, then we don't grow. So I guess for where we think about things is, and what we love, what our, our customers and, and the trend that we're seeing is that people are spending a lot more time talking about the adaptation side of it. And by that, I mean the part leading up to the adaptation. So that's recovery. And I love that because that is, that's where all the magic happens, right? Like there's, yeah. there's nothing that ha- Well, there's something that happens. Like we're getting muscular damage. We're applying tension, um, fatigue, all of those things. Uh, those are all great stimulus signals, but what happens after is, is the reason, uh, we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing the stimulus. So if you're going to have an optimal stimulus like ARX, you're going to have to provide optimal, uh, recovery components so that you can have an optimal adaptation. And I think that full chain is starting to finally be put into a, a singular business model, um, of which a lot of them have ARX on the front end of that. And then they have cryo units and then they have uh, Normatec boots and cold tubs and uh, whatever other training or other recovery tool that they can fit financially uh, square footage wise. And they're trying to optimize that recovery side. That is going to change your hypertrophy more than anything. Uh, You can do a ton of volume, but if you don't recover well, you're going to stay the same size. You might even go the opposite way. You might even lose size, become catabolic all the time. So, that's I don't know, that's my thoughts on things. And I just love knowing that when I am going to take the route of, hey, I want to grow, I want to add hypertrophy uh, training to my workout, I feel confident that I'm going to have the optimal stimulus. And then I start all of my programming is really it's like very small time. I think about it on ARX because it, it doesn't require a ton of time anymore. It doesn't require a complicated set rep combination. Um, and then I just, okay, stimulus, check the box. Great. Let's focus a hundred percent on how do I recover so that I can have the best adaptation. So it kind of flips, it flips the model a little bit. Uh, when you know that you're, you got your bases covered on the front end. Now all I have to worry about is the recovery side. Yeah. No, I think that's a good answer. And I think, um, you know, it's kind of safe to say that in terms of the tools available to us, I feel like, um, I think this is a good way to kind of summarize it is, ARX will get you what you can get. <laughs> Whatever you got. Uh, yeah, in terms of like optimizing that response to training, I feel like it, it probably can. Um, there's no reason for me to think otherwise. Um, but but yeah, I suppose yet to be proven as a tool that's superior um, if you're not talking about uh, efficiency and um uh safety and matching resistance curves like that it's obvious it, it sounds quite clear to me that it is perhaps superior in those domains but um muscle hypertrophy is obviously determined by so many other things um so no it's uh i think that's that, that's fair for me to say that would you would you say at this point mike yeah i would yeah. agree and it's it's really about how do i optimize the stimulus uh and do it with all of those those things you just said like if you're not doing it safe that's going to come back and bite you right It may not happen in the first year, it may not happen in the fifth year, but at some point in time, it's going to come back and bite you. And your goal to search for this higher output uh, stimulus, then you're going to be like, oh, I need to start doing heavy negatives. And then you have, you know, you're doing lift offs for the bar uh, for a bench press, right? With like 600 pounds, but you only can really bench 300 pounds. Um, So these are all different ways that we toy and play. But then we also are changing or moving the goalposts on what is safe now and what is ultimately going to be uh, the thing that we can, 
yeah, it's not going to hurt us in the end, which is the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. So I love, again, just the simplicity and the stress-free approach that I can take towards my training and training, honestly, anybody else. I was just uh, at a certification course for uh, a different technology called uh, NewFit, and there was a, a bodybuilder there. And I started just kind of chit-chatting with him and asking him about what his day looked like and his routine. I, I mean, I kind of knew what he was going to say, but as they start going through it, you're just like, oh my God. This is this is a very, very strenuous, difficult process that he's going through. And I could help him at least get back. I don't know. I, I mean, everyone's training different, but like probably like 75 percent of the hours uh, that he's spending in the gym uh, can just be no more anymore. And he can spend all of his time now on the recovery uh, and making sure that his diet's correct. And, you know, he's going to step on stage in three months. So. That's that's extremely important stuff to him, but he's still got to keep his training up. Uh, and he, God forbid he has a life, right? God forbid that he has a girlfriend. God forbid he, you know, wants to read a book, uh, have a hobby, do anything <laughs> other than what he's doing. And that's just that's a that's a box that a lot of people have been put in because the stimulus is failing them, but they don't know any better. Right, that's not true. That's that that's not true at all. Uh, they just don't have access to anything better. I know, and I know. that's what. That's what we want to change. I don't think I. I disagree. I think they don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm going to be controversial. I just think they don't know in a lot of cases. There's, there's probably uh, statistics. Is yeah, statistics will say that there's probably some people who don't know better. But if I, I once I started explaining that to this guy, uh, he just his eyes lit up. He was really? he was so intrigued. He was like, oh my god. It's like, really? <laughs> it's like I don't have to do you know all this volume trading. I mean, yeah, you're going to do volume. Because that is definitely shown to, to improve hypertrophy. But at to what point, right? There's a, a margin of utility at some point and diminishing returns. So it, it just more is not better. Uh, the right amount is better. And that's what I love about the data. That's what I love having in front of me day to day. I know I'm in a stressful environment like, and I'm falling off the map uh, of my fatigue. <laughs> you know, four or five reps before I did last week. I'm going to cut the workout. Because I'm not, I'm not prepared to go to that level. I, the the numbers are telling me something otherwise, and I'm going to listen. And it's just again, it's such such a stress free environment to work out in, and it's just a stress free way to approach your protocol. But again, we're still a new company, we're still a new technology, and our goal is to get it out to the masses, not just the bodybuilders of the world, but like my mom. I want my mom to to have perfectly loaded eccentrics for bone mineral density as she ages, and only spend ten minutes of a week doing it. I, I want exercise that's, or we want exercise at some point in time to be just almost like an afterthought. Like it's so simple now that we just sit down, I just work hard and I leave and it all works out well in the end. I mean, that's, that's pretty yeah. darn, that's pretty darn cool to think about in the future. And we're there, like we're approaching that. And everybody who, who gets on board with ARX with us is, uh, is telling us the same thing. They're like, it's so great, <laughs> not only for their own personal benefits, but like they get to help so many people who they otherwise would have never considered training um, because of all those variables and all the safety and yeah, everything that goes with it. So it, you, it could be, it could be easier. If you ever crack the bodybuilding market, I will be very surprised. <laughs> um, maybe in time, uh, like you say, maybe it's just um, inevitable that this type of technology will be very hard to ignore at, at come a certain point in time. But my God, the dogma in that community is very difficult to crack. So that's going to be interesting to see. And if you look at like kind of the history of the people who have attempted uh, to change the industry and provide new technologies, um, I was just doing some research the other day about uh, all the like, kind of the women's trends that have happened over the last 60 years. And then, you know, the slenderized, I think it was called, uh, no, slenderella. And if you look at some of the tech and tools they were using um, for what they thought was, you know, changing the physique of, of women, you're like, oh, man, I don't, <laughs> that's a tough sell. But if you're trying to make a change now today and you have a software component with quantifiable data, now it's not about the messenger anymore. It's not about Mike. It's not about our team. It's not about ARX. Um, it's just about the data. And if, if I get a bodybuilder or anybody who's skeptical, on the machine and I can show them improvements in data, uh, I don't need to do all the hard convincing. I don't have to play the ego game and, um, and try to battle that. I let, it, I let the data speak for us. 
And that's that's where things are different, I think, with ARX um, and and what the movement we want to create moving forward is. We have this unbelievably res- unbelievable resource in the data component. And that's why Skyler, Skyler Tanner, who's been on here a bunch of times, um, he's here in Austin. And I mean, his claim is what? It's like uh, twice as strong in 12, twice a week. 12 minutes 20, a week or something. Tw- tw- twice as strong in 22 minutes a week, yeah. you know, twice when you come in. He loves alliteration. I totally butchered that. But uh, <laughs> he shows them that, though. He doesn't just promise it. And then six months from now, uh, says, hey, uh, do you feel twice as strong? He literally prints out something or shows them on the screen and says, you are 63% stronger than you were when you walked in the door. Do you want Do you want to continue training with me? How could you possibly say no if you're a customer? And if you do, I don't want you as a customer, <laughs> right? Like those are, you're, you're clearly on a different thought process. But the data speaks and the data wins every time. So don't believe me, just see the data for yourself. Yeah, I just I'm on Skylar's website now, which is um, uh, smartstrengthaustin.com, which is Skylar's facility in Austin. Um, and the tagline is 22 minutes times twice a week equals twice as strong. <laughs> so, and, he's, and if yeah, I think on his podcast last time, he said, I, I still he's a year and a half into it. Like he's, he's never it. not he's never not one time uh, made that or like seen that promise fail somebody. Yeah, I mean that's that's an insane ask. That is <laughs> of actually. any trainer. Like, get that for everybody that you possibly could walk through the door, and that's that's going to be a very very difficult proposition for them. But that's why the new model is is working great for a lot of people. Is they don't have to they don't have to be like a celebrity trainer or uh, you know have been doing it for twenty years. They can just show that this this technology is is going to do the heavy lifting quote unquote for you. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to work out in your favor. And as it happens, it's like, Oh, we're 10% better today. 5% better the next week. Oh, you know, 35% better over the course of three months. Like we're working towards our goal. Yeah. I mean, to show that to, to any customer is, is gold and Skyler and everybody who's adopted, uh, that very quantified approach is doing very well for themselves. Yeah, and no, there is a number of um, interesting, um, successful kind of ARX case studies. Obviously, we had uh, you and Abon, and Abron's ever strong in San Francisco, and he's absolutely smashing it. Um, and I, I, I recently learned also, is it uh, Marcelo over in Australia, um, who's got a few ARX facilities? Are you able to talk about that? Or is that, I don't know if... Uh, that's a little bit secret, um, but I'm assuming no, he's having no. he's having a lot of success as well over there. Yeah, yeah. So they did a little different model uh, for anybody who's looking to look them up. Intense Health. Uh, they're out of Perth, awesome. Australia. Which I did that that install, and it's a very very long ways away from Austin, Texas. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're absolutely. I mean, they started just in a very small. I think it was like 500 and 600 square feet um, facility, and now they've have multiple facilities in the course of the last year. I think they're at four right now. Um, the very simple model, though, and using the data to really bring the people in, using the data to ultimately keep the people too. So, Marcelo used to have to kind of walk them through the whole process and explain, "Hey, have you read this book?" And like maybe take an excerpt of something and get them back to around the principles of it, uh, and that would be the selling point. But now he can really just say, "Here's a flip book," and I think Skyler does this. Um, he just prints out people's <laughs> reports and he says, look, this is somebody your age who I took from month one to month five. Here's their results. Uh, we did some caliper testing and this is their body fat that we, you know, inches they lost around their hips or their underarms or whatever. Uh, and you can just go through that consultation process now and have amazing selling tools that really differentiate you from every other trainer uh, that's going to be around the block. So yeah, Marcel is doing great out there. Uh, they got plans for for more facilities in the coming future. But yeah, that just that warms our heart to know that we took um, he and his wife's business and you know quadrupled it in a course of a year. Uh, and that's what we want to do, not just for them. And it's around the world. We have people that are constantly looking to uh, start one facility with plans for two, three, five, ten of them. And the data is going to be the reason why they get there. It's not going to be just like another 
uh, SoulCycle, you know, marketing showdown between SoulCycle and Flywheel. Who's got the best marketing? And who's got this celebrity trainer that showed up and posted something on Instagram? Uh, these are hard data points that are true and real. And uh, then you get a testimonial from your customers uh, that support all of those things. Uh, it's really a no-brainer in terms of your marketing. I think Abe and Owen in San Francisco are 100% seeing and reaping that benefit now. Uh, they're both excellent salespeople, but at the end of the day, they just kind of point at the screen <laughs> and say, do you want to continue with me or not? And here are the <laughs> results. Awesome. Mike, this has been uh, really, really fun and productive. I've learned a lot about ARX today. Uh, really appreciate you you taking the time to come on the show. Um, for all of the listeners to find the the show notes to this uh, this episode, please go to corporatewarrior.com co forward slash ARX. Um, actually, shall I use that? I've just figured that might not actually be the best idea. Let's do, okay, let's do forward slash Palano. So corporatewarrior.co forward slash Palano, P-U-L-L-A-N-O. And the reason I've changed it, so I, I think I might have the, the other link going somewhere else. Um, and to find the list of all the episodes of the podcast, um, please go to corporatewarrior.co forward slash podcast. And until next time, guys, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Before you head off, head on over to corporatewarrior.co forward slash ebook to get your free high intensity training Google sheet to track your training progress and get my ebook with 20 interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay and Bill Day Simone on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss and overall health in an efficient, effective and sustainable way. Head on over to corporatewarrior.co forward slash ebook now and enter your email address for instant access. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior and How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and into Corporate Warrior and How Did You Hear About Us field. <laughs>